Let's explore the ARP 2600's filter. Now, unfortunately, due to changes in the ARP 2600's design, this is not going to be a demonstration of all of the filters that have ever been used with the ARP 2600 because of what model this particular 2600 is. This is the model with the questionable 4012 model um, filter, which was the one that very delightfully infringed upon the Moog patent, which is to say this has ARP's version of a Moog ladder filter inside of it, which is why the filter is awesome in it. Okay. Even without any resonance, you can. There's a richness to the sound that isn't present in a lot of synthesizers filters um, when the resonance isn't present. Um, next, we have a fine tune slider here. Now. When I first saw it, I'm like, why is there a fine tune slider in the filter? What are you tuning? And then, duh, um, I realized that it's for when the resonance is uh, self-oscillating, you have a fine tune to set the pitch of the oscillator that the filter has become in self-resonant, in self-oscillation, uh, which is very nice. It's a nice feature. That way you can fine tune if you want to use the sine wave that occurs when your filter is in self-oscillation, you want to use that sine wave as a tone source, you got fine-tuning to make sure it's in tune with the other oscillators, which is awesome. Um, let's have a listen to the resonance. Unfortunately, this has an arrangement where the more resonance you have, the less output you have volume-wise, so you kind of have to adjust for that. That's kind of a sad setback, but it's really common for synthesizers from this tone. Anyhow, it's very rich sounding filter, especially due to what can be done with it. And this is where, again, the ARP 2600 goes crazy. It's because we have so many modulation possibilities. This is the mixer for all of the other inputs. It's inside the filter and it is pre-filter. So whatever is mixed here goes through the filter and comes out filtered. Um, the normaling has, and you've seen me do this in other videos, has oscillator one, oscillator two, oscillator three. It has a connection to the noise generator. And the ring modulator. So these are all the things that can come into the filter. And also, you'll notice that we have audio input jacks that you can overcome the normaling and put whatever audio source you frickin' want to go in there. Like in the oscillator section, I showed you that you could have all the outputs from one oscillator going into all of these inputs if you wanted to create a timbre of mixed um, waveforms, which is cool. But you have that sort of diversity. You can decide what goes into the filter and how it is mixed which is a source of, on its own, a source of great timbral diversity. 
Unfortunately, there are only three control inputs uh, into the filter, which I think is weird. Um, it seems to me, with all of the opportunity, I mean, we got freaking five um, modulation inputs, technically, into oscillator two, but only three into the filter. And it would seem to me that the filter is the thing you really want to have a lot of inputs into. But we can use the voltage processors as mixers to get more in there if we want. We'll talk about that later. We're talking about how it is normaled right now without patching. It has keyboard CV, which is on all the time. It gets darker near the bottom of the keyboard, brighter near the top of the keyboard. The way that you defeat this is to put a dummy plug in it. That way, you defeat the normaling, which has it with the keyboard filter effect on, and now it is the same filter setting all the way across the entire keyboard. Without. With. So, a lot of times you will see ARP 2600 players with that in, but you know, just as something to stop it from having the keyboard effect if the keyboard effect isn't wanted. Also, you can use that as an input from anything else like um, sample and hold. Let's just run some sample and hold into there. Of course, it doesn't have its own slider, so you can't control how much that effect's going to occur. So that's something to take into account when you're putting something into that slider. It is now no longer related to keyboard CV. You have overcome that function by patching. So now it's just a standard control input as any other, but it doesn't have a slider. So that's something to keep in mind. You can lessen effects by using the voltage processors um, to basically control, or actually with the sample and hold actually have a control that you can use to control the amount so that's convenient but we'll talk about the sample and hold later because it's complex um, the other normal function is the ADSR um, the envelope you can control the envelope amount of course analog synthesizers you don't get that much effect when the resonance is all the way down it, it seems to lack spirit the envelope controlling the filter without the resonance up seems to be kind of a dull effect but not so it adds character even though the resonance isn't up which is a really nice feature of this particular synthesizer